Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Rabi Rahimahullah wa ta'ala said that the Holy Qur'an recognizes the possibility of mental forces. And this is in fact what Nazar Lagjana or the evil eye is. It's not that something travels from the eye and hits somebody. Rather, it's just the concentration of mind or an evil thought which becomes so strong and something emanates from that evil thought that influences another person. So here, Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih Rabi rahimahullah explained that there are psychological effects that we all have on each other. And this is something that Islam acknowledges, but it does not allow us to take it to a superstitious level. Now in principle, the Holy Qur'an has described this as well. We find an example in the Holy Qur'an of the effects that the power of concentration had on people. And this magic was only an optical illusion. It was a concentration of the mind by the magicians. It's narrated in the Holy Qur'an that Hazrat Musa salam replied to the magicians and said to them that throw ye. And when they, as in the magicians threw, they enchanted the eyes of the people and struck them with an awe and brought forth the great magic. Then Allah Ta'ala says that we inspired Hazrat Musa salam saying that throw your rod and lo, it swallowed up whatever they feigned. So from this verse of the Holy Qur'an, we learn this principle. Through mesmerism, the magicians of Pharaoh cast an influence on the minds of the audience. But when Hazrat Musa salam threw his rod on the floor, it snapped everyone out of that state, and their illusion was broken. It's on this principle of the Holy Qur'an that the Holy Prophet wasallam taught that one way to break the effect of the evil eye is to bathe ourselves. Well, the magic that the magicians of Pharaoh had done was a mesmerism that was broken by a rod being thrown on the ground, by being snapped out of it. So also bathing is a way that has a, the Prophet wasallam taught us to snap out of it. It's narrated in Hadith that the influence of an evil eye is a fact. If anything would precede the destiny, it would be the influence of an evil eye. And when you are asked to take a bath as a cure from the influence of an evil eye, then you should take a bath. And when we look at the philosophy of wuzu, of ablution and bathing in Islam, it's not just physical, but it's also psychological. Water has a neutralizing effect on the mind. So on the one hand, bathing can calm a person down who's angry. And on the other hand, it can stimulate a person who's drowsy. Water has these same two opposite effects. When a person is excited, when a person is filled with anger, it can help calm them down. If we tell them that you should wash your face, you should do wuzu, you should bathe. And in the same way, someone who's falling asleep, when they wash their face, it wakes them up. So in the same way that the rod of Hazrat Musa salam striking the floor broke the trance on the mesmerized audience. So similarly, bathing can refresh a person enough to break the influence of another person's negative thoughts on them. The psychological influence, which is very subtle, that can be broken just by bathing. There's a subtle physical influence that recitation of the blessed words of the Holy Qur'an can have. And this is what's called rukya. This is a concept in Islam as well. Now one concept of this is found in a hadith, that whenever the Holy Prophet ﷺ went to bed, he used to blow on his hands while reciting Surat Al-Fatiha and Surat Al-Nas, and then he passed his hands over his body. This was a type of rukya that he did. It was a type of prayer. Then also it's narrated that the Holy Prophet ﷺ used to seek protection against the evil of jinn and the evil eyes until Surat Al-Falaq and Surat Al-Nas were revealed. After they were revealed, he took them for seeking Allah's protection and left everything besides them. So here also we see a rukya, verses of the Holy Qur'an that were recited as a prayer, as a rukya. And they were adopted by the Holy Prophet wasallam to be safeguarded from the evil eye, from the psychological influences of other people. Also it's narrated that once a companion of the Holy Prophet wasallam was able to cure someone from a poisonous bite by the blessings of reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. On this, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that how do you know this, that Surah Al-Fatiha is a Rukya? So from these ahadiths we learn that Rukya is to neutralize the negative influences around us through prayer and the blessings of the recitation of the Holy Qur'an. Another way that we can guard ourselves against the influence of the evil eye is through prayer. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said that there is no Rukya except for the evil eye or from the sting of a scorpion. So this is also what has been described, that there are certain blessings in words of prayer and in certain words of the Holy Qur'an. So explaining these psychological influences that other people can have on us, Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih Rabi rahimahullah said that as far as the power of mind is concerned, there is no denying it. And as such, a measure of the influence of one's mind on others can be believed in. But one should not be afraid of it, because prayers can dispel all such influences. Allah Ta'ala's power is greater. 
Now, since it's easy for people to misunderstand these kinds of subtle realities and fall into superstition, the Holy Prophet ﷺ strictly forbade any superstition. It's narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said that tell people that if anyone ties his beard or wears round his neck a string to ward off the evil eye, then Muhammad has nothing to do with him ﷺ. Then also condemning the un-Islamic practices of Rukia, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that Rukia amulets and charms are polytheism. So here we see the Prophet ﷺ condemning any form of rukya that led to superstition, that was not something that was based on prayer and recitation of the Holy Qur'an and the blessed words of the Qur'an. Also condemning the superstitious practices of rukya, the Prophet ﷺ said that 70,000 people of my followers will enter paradise without accounts, and they are those who do not practice a rukya and do not see an evil omen in things, and put their trust in their Lord. So in this hadith, superstition is also condemned. Now some Muslims falsely believe that the Holy Prophet ﷺ came under the influence of magic for a period of time. However, we cannot accept any narration that contradicts the Holy Qur'an. Such superstitions are to be rejected. Hazrat Masih said that a person loses his faith by saying that the Holy Prophet ﷺ came under the influence of magic, God forbid. He quotes the Holy Qur'an where Allah Ta'ala says that is yaqulu zalimuna in tattabiyuna illa rajula mashura that when the wrongdoers say that you follow not but a man affected by magic. Hazrat Masih said that those who say such things are wrongdoers, not Muslims. To say that the Holy Prophet ﷺ came under the influence of magic, God forbid, is a statement of those who are faithless and wrongdoers. Now, summarizing Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Rabi Rahimahullah explained the common misunderstandings of evil eye. He said that mostly it's superstition. Most of the phenomena is understood as superstition. More often than not, the things that are related about Nazir Lagjana, the evil eye, events that are related about it, the bad effects of one's sight or observation, this is mostly reported very irresponsibly and in exaggerated terms. So in summary, what Islam teaches is that there is a subtle psychological influence that we have on each other. And also there are certain blessings and effect in certain words of prayer and certain words of the Holy Qur'an. And these subtle realities are accepted in Islam. It is we do not deny it, nor can we deny it. But to take these realities to the point of superstition, to believe that they can have directly a negative effect on us, that we have to do un-Islamic things to be saved from them, this is something that Islam forbids us from. So the concept of Nazar Lagjana, the concept of evil eye in Islam is something that is in line with our psychological realities. But it is a concept where we are saved from any type of superstition.